Hi, uh, this is Mark J. Aquaviva again, um, going live. Uh, I, I usually do it on Tuesdays, but I, I just felt to quickly jump online and um, and give you this. I, I, I've just done one there, um, I, and I found myself going into a deep explanation of what it's all about. But I thought for more practical usage, what I would do is simply read out uh, or, or recite to you um, a poem and this uh, this is a poem uh, I write poems um, to describe um, each of the sort of basic conditions that I I see as um, how we go about finding the yoga uh, I, I, I see it as I, I see yoga practice as not something we do to the body um, not something we force um, it's we have to apply ourselves to being in deep communion with our bodies and so we can listen to what it is saying to us because it will tell you everything you need to know um, and this these poems are designed to help directly guide you in your practice i use them quite regularly to um, help people in what they're doing so what I suggest is you get into a comfortable position of some kind. Uh, it could be a posture, it can be a posture, but uh, don't make it too complicated. Something that you can relax into but engage with. And then I shall begin. Um, try and apply each uh, line as a physical instruction. Okay, so here we go. So from here, just as you are, become quiet and present, listening from the heart. Make touch even and make it kind. Then just ground and breathe until you find a, a sacred place. Inside your touch, at the center of your space, where you can just let go. Okay, so I've got my single signal back, so I'm going to have another go. So I'll, I'll take you through the poem again. Um, and uh, the idea is to apply it to your physical practice. So the, <clears throat> the, the, there, are, there are always six parts. I, I have six conditions, and each condition uh, that can be uh, represented by a poem has six lines. Uh, the first line is where to start from. The second line is about how to expand upon what you're doing, to shed some light on what you're doing. <clears throat> the third line is generally to do with the, the kind of, well, the solution, the, um, <clears throat> the thing that will get you to where you want to be in your practice. And that will be the third condition. Um, which relies on the first two. It relies on you, you know, starting from a useful place and and then expanding upon that starting point. Uh, the fourth line is to do with naturalisation of practice. You know, how do I practice this? Uh, the fifth and sixth lines are more about receiving. Um, through breathing, getting the, allowing the breath to accommodate what you're doing and what you what you're practicing, and the sixth one is about surrender into the nature, into the reality of integration. So, <clears throat> once again, here's the poem, and apply yourself to each line as a practice. So, from here, just as you are. Just as you are. 
<clears throat> Just as you are. Become quiet and present. Listening from the heart. So the first line is um, about acceptance and, and just allowing yourself to be and tuning into where you are in this moment, um, in this space, at this time. It's acceptance. It's the principle of Santosha in yoga. So, so from here, just as you are. Become quiet and present. That's, that's a decision. That's the, that's the action, that's the expansion upon what it is that you're trying to achieve. Um, it's a decision to quieten the mind, it's a decision to become present to what you're doing. Um, and it makes me think of um, turning up at a, a cinema to watch a, a film you've been wanting to watch. Uh, it, first of all you have to turn up, first of all you have to be there, you, you get in your seat, you relax, and then you sit back. And you sort of, you're ready uh, as the credits roll, you know? Become quiet and present. Third line is listening from the heart. Now, what does that mean? Um, it, uh, I think it means receive information as opposed to um, listening from the ears, listening out for. It, there's a there's a sort of positioning of where you're looking, uh, where you're where you're sort of uh, present from, and being present from the third eye or the you know being present from your thinking um, is often misconstrued as presence. Um, thinking about what you're doing is not the same as being present too. So, it's a sort of clarification. It's it's the answer to how to become um, quiet and present just as you are to what is going on, see? So the poem goes, so from here, just as you are, become quiet and present, uh, listening from the heart. And when you're there, uh, you need to know what to do. And uh, the practice is to make your touch equal. So wherever you're making contact, make it equal. Make touch even. There's an evenness of quality. Make touch even, make it kind. That's the practice. And then ground and breathe. Make touch even, make it kind. So. There's an engagement with what you're, with with the surfaces that you meet. Make it kind. It alludes to the the quality of your engagement. And uh, when you make your touch kind, um, the body, the way the body does it, will will be will have less conflict uh, within. So it'll be uh, half the complications will disappear in the moment of deciding to be kind in what you're doing. Um, so make touch even, make it kind, then just ground and breathe. It's so simple. Once, once um, you have an evenness of support from what you're doing, you just let go into that support and you breathe. And you let the breath go and you do it again. You ground and breathe. It's a rhythmic practice. And, and this is the, the whole of the practice is uh, make your touch even, make it kind, and then just ground and breathe, which is the fifth condition, until you find. What are we looking for? You ground and breathe until you find a quiet central place, a quiet sacred place. Hi Gail, I'm sharing my conditions poem with you. Um, hi Peter, hi Hannah, and then, sorry, yes, hi. Um, so where was I? Yes, you ground and breathe until you, you just ground and breathe until you find um, a sacred place. Now it could 
it could refer to where you are in space. You ground and breathe until you find a, a, a sacred place where, where it feels right. Um, what I'm actually talking about or referring to in the final experience is a sacred place within. And this will be along, um, somewhere along the inside of the spine, close to who you are, close to the centre of your being. And um, these places are referred to and other things. And um, that was my phone going. Uh, so I've got a, I've got a student coming soon. So I need to uh, wind this up soon. So ground and breathe until you find a sacred place inside your touch. So you are touching and you are looking for this quiet, sacred place inside your touch and within your space. It's the centre of all the space around you where you just let go. And, and I, would, I would aim towards the heart as a general ambition. Um, so one more time. This is to apply to your physical practice, whatever you're doing right this moment become, uh -huh, uh, sorry, whatever you're doing right this moment, so from here, just as you are, become quiet and present, listening from the heart. Make touch even, make it kind, and then just ground and breathe. Until you find that sacred place inside your touch, at the centre of this space, you can just let go. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you uh, if you want to clip that last bit, download it, clip that last bit, and put it on a loop for your practice, you'll find it does wonders. You apply it physically to what you're doing. Thank you very much. I need to go now. I have someone coming. Lots of love to you. Namaste. Bye.